Noam, hardly welcome. We looking forward what you have to share with us. Og Bengt Ove, som er leder i MIF i Moss, han er til stede her, og han vil tolke. Han er meget dyktig, og jeg håper og tror at dere ikke kommer til å miste noe i kveld når han oversetter. Han er dyktig, så hjertelig velkommen til deg og Bengt Ove. Da overlater jeg mikrofon til dem. Yes. Okay, just like... Uh to thank uh, Tore uh, for inviting me and MIF for bringing me over to speak again here in Norway. I will first say talk to Tore and to MIF som har invitert meg hit en dag gang. Uh, I've been, I came uh, from Israel uh, yesterday. Jeg kom fra Israel i går. This is actually my sixth time speaking here in Norway. Det er faktisk uh, sjette gangen jeg uh, holdt tale her i Norge. It's always lovely seeing uh, support of, of Israel over here. Og det er herlig å se Israels venner her. I can tell we take this uh, strength and uh, power back with us back to Israel. Eh och att han med med den styrken och den kraften härifrån hem till och den varme välkomsten har fått ta med mig hem till Israel. The same time the contrast over here in Norway we have to be dealing sometimes with the government. Och samtidigt så är ser vi ju stora kontraster också. Vi har har ju när vi håller på med med förhållande till myndigheterna. Are we talking about the experience of uh, speaking over here? Jag ska dela lite av, av erfarenheterna mina med att tala här. But before everything let me try uh, showing just where we are on this map. Men först ska vi visa dock er var vi befinner oss här på detta karta. This is again a political map. Ja, det är ett politisk kart. This is a political map that we like using in front of foreign uh, press and the diplomats. Det här är ett politiskt kart som vi brukar framför en internationell press och för diplomater. Okay, we, we show this map is to show how the world sees uh, Israel or half of Israel. Uh, vi brukar kartet för att visa världen hur man ser på Israel eller håller Israel. Okay. Uh, I Israel, det är Israel som hela det internationella samhället har anerkänt. And so this is Sderot, it's a 45 minute drive to Tel Aviv, the center of Israel and an hour and 15 to Jerusalem. Ja. Det är bara 45 minuters körtur till Tel Aviv och en timme och ett kvarters körtur till Jerusalem. Now Sderot in the whole western Negev region so, so that Ligo in the Westly Negev region has been under a uh, rocket fire for the past uh, almost 13 years now. Har varit under uh, raket i snart 13 år. I can tell you that the daily news the broadcast in Israel in the past uh, 6 7 years. Kan se att det dagliga nyhetssändningarna i Israel i sista 6 7 år almost every day or every other day. Nästan varje dag eller nästan under varje dag. In Israel, I'm talking about. Israel. We had the daily news broadcast uh, mentioning how two Qassam rockets fell nearby Zderot. No injuries, no harm done. Hör du gärna om två Qassam raketter som falt ner när Zderot? Kanske inte så många skada. No injuries, no harm done. Maybe two people were treated for shock. Kanske två eller tre personer blev behandlade för shock. And to the weather report. Och så hör du värmeningar. And you know, the question is asking. People around the world. How do people get uh, information about Israel, about the conflict, about spør, the Middle East? Spør, spør om verden, får information om Israel og Midtøsten? What would you guys tell me? How do you know what's happening in Israel? Eh, vet dere hva som skjer i Israel? What would you tell me? What will you see? If it's uh, news broadcast, if it's television news, TV, newspapers, avisa, internet, internet. Magazines. Magazines, radio sometimes. But I'm trying to explain very clearly. But we know today on the other side of the world is what we hear, see and read through media elements. And this is our perspective outside on reality in what's called bubble. And the question is, can anybody grasp uh, the meaning of shock, anxiety, or trauma through listening. Through listening to news broadcasts, watching it on television. That whole human side of the story is not mentioned or understood through media elements. And this became our challenge to speak up Och detta har blivit vår utfordring att tala ut om. To present a unique rocket reality today like no other place in the world. Så presentera en unik raketrealitet över hela världen. 
Can you imagine living one kilometer away from Gaza? Kan du förstå att allt är bara en kilometer från Gaza? Is to explain that once a rocket is being fired from Gaza towards the rot or the entire western Negev. När en raket blir avfyrd från Gaza mot Sederot eller västliga Negev. It means you have 15 seconds or less to run for your life. Det betyder att du har mindre än 15 sekunder för att springa för livet. Now, how do you express to anyone having 15 seconds? Ja, hur då förklarar du för människor att bara ha 15 sekunder på sig? What can you possibly do in 15 seconds? Vad vad kan du få till att göra i löpande 15 sekunder? Imagine sitting sitting like this. Så för att du sitter här. If it's in a restaurant, if it's in a classroom. En restaurang eller ett klassrum. Having a siren going off. Så hör du en siren så går? You expect it to get out of your chairs. Ska du förvänta att du ska resa upp från stolen? Run through the quarters. Spring ut dörrar. With all, all the other people. Samtidigt som alla andra folk också vill ut genom samma dörr. And hoping to reach a secured room less than 15 seconds. Och att du ska nå ett tillflyktsrum på bara 15 sekunder. It's all became very part of the daily routine life in this part of the region. Det har blivit en del av den dagliga rutinen där nere. And before I go on, I'll try showing this short video called 15 seconds. Så jag fortsätter så ska jag visa den korta lilla filmen som vi har kallat för 15 sekunder. I usually start with this video. Brukar man visa start med den här videon? With the purpose is to shock your audience. Och hans idé då att skapa lite chock hos publiken. To express how intense this reality can actually get. För att beskriva hur intens den här realiteten kan vara. By seeing this video today. Och när du ser den här videon här idag. You understand how over one million Israelis in southern Israel. Så förstår du hur mer än en miljon israelerna i det sydliga Israel. Have been affected by this rocket reality. Har blivit påverkade av den här raketrealiteten. For the past for the for the past five six years. De sista fem sex åren. You will see your live footage that I was able to capture by living in Stirol. You will see live films that we have spilt in. If it's filming the children on the first day of school, a couple years ago. It was the first school day. A couple years ago. We filmed children on the way to school. We filmed children who were on the way to school. On the way to school, we had the sirens going off. On the way to school, there was a siren. The siren is a loudspeaker with a woman's voice. And the siren is also a high tone with a woman's voice. Singing in Hebrew, call a red, red alert. Some sing in Hebrew, red, fire red. And we filmed the children. Running for their lives into the school itself. We film our children when they spring for life. There are like seven explosions into the town. And there are several explosions all over the city. And this footage, or this filming, was broadcast around to the world. It was sent out over the world. It was broadcast over the world through Fox News and CNN. And it was Fox News and CNN. So this is just to show how intense this reality can actually get. It's just to show you how intense this reality can actually get. Far than threatening civilian populations. And this is the only area in the whole Western world that is generally exposed to threats of rocket attacks against the civilian population. And somehow, people until today did not even hear about this rocket reality. By any other reason, so ha ha, or by any other reason, the most part of the people have not even heard about this reality of rockets. You know, the first question I ask my audience on the other side of the world. The first question I often ask is still the public on the other side of the world. I ask who here heard about Gaza beforehand. Them here have heard about Gaza. You got every single person raising their hands. Absolutely, absolutely, all of them raise their hands. Yes. The next question in a different kind of audience. Also, the next question, well. Ikke her i kveld, men hos et annet publikum. Who he heard about Sderot? Hvem her har hørt om Sderot? Maybe one or two people raising their hands. Og da er det kanskje bare en eller to personer som rekker opp handa. When specifically the town Sderot, men akkurat byen Sderot, became the only town in the 21st century, den eneste byen nå i det 21. århundre, where entire civilian population, der hele sivilbefolkningen, has been under rocket, over thousands of rockets exploding, har vært utsatt for over tusen raket, into its uh, region for the past over a decade. For the past over a decade. And somehow people until today, as we said, did not even hear about this. 
So first of all, we see, see this as the injustice going on. How there's no balance of understanding. And I came very fast to realize that we became the front lines of the information media war. And more than that, we came the front lines of the spiritual war. What happens in our region impacts the entire world. My experience traveling around the world seeing the popularity of becoming anti-Israel anti-Zionist anti-Semitism arising it's the support and sympathy of Hamas in political parties and the uh, popularity on campuses worldwide the first time I was here in Norway actually I heard from the foreign ministry supporting openly Hamas no problem. a year and a half ago I went to campuses in North America I went to compete with the campaign called I Heart Hamas <laughs> and what is Hamas? What is terrorism all about? We're talking about an international recognized terrorist organization that calls out for genocide on their charter for the Jewish people. And, and their acceptance is completely absurd. But to explain how this starts actually from this region is quite a challenge we have today. To explain how unique this actually is, this reality, is asking only one question. You tell me, would any other country in the world would tolerate only one rocket being fired towards the territory. There is no country in the world that would tolerate even one rocket. The fact that we have for the past uh, over decade, over 25,000 rockets being fired is, is to explain the much a deeper level understanding on the ground what is going on over here. And first of all, it's the daily routine life. It's like no other place in the world today. What, what people got used to living before and after rocket attacks. If it's even for me, my experience of moving to Zerot was waking up almost every single morning with the collective alarm clock. Having the sirens going off from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning, followed by an explosion. When you think this is the time how the, the entire town is waking up, parents on the way to shop, to work, children on the way to the kindergartens, to schools, those were the times having it directed into the road. My routine for me until today as I drive into the road, or anywhere, or any other place in the country or in the world driving, as I arrive into the town, I put down my window sheet of the car, I turn off my music, I take off my seatbelt, because you always alert to jump out of your car. And a couple of months ago, a mother was describing to me that while she was driving around the town, the siren went off, she jumped out of her seat, and she went to her back seat needing to choose what child to grab in first. What child to grab in first so she can run as close as she can towards the wall, towards the shelter. So the more dilemmas living in this part of the region, 
And why do people still live in this region? And the more we see how we have a very unique rocket reality, and I guarantee, this is my promise to you, on your next visit to Israel, if you just visit anywhere you want, in Zderot or the Western Negev or Southern Israel, Okay, this entire region. Every single person in this re- in this region has its own unique experience and story about a rocket exploding nearby. And more than that, every person, including myself, have experiences and stories they'd be telling you how the two minutes before, two seconds before, their children were standing right at that point where the rocket exploded, two seconds before where the bus stop where the rocket exploded, depending on the Russian roulette reality, depending on luck, coincidences, on miracles, this is the hardest thing to get across to people what became very part of the daily routine life. It's our moral obligation today is speaking up and presenting these stories in any creative way as possible. It's the most moral thing that has to be done today. Okay, and just seeing afterwards, after a couple of years, seeing the effect it had. This is part of what needs to be done is first of all educating the next generation. Educating the next generation with accurate information coming out from Israel. And why this is the front lines of the spiritual war? The, this balance of media coverage on this part of the region is, is, is impacting both of our communities today. All the way to the younger generations. When people getting this balance of media coverage in our part of the region, people are going all the way against Israel. So will folk enten gå imot Israel? Against the truth? Imot sannheten? Against uh, against history? Imot historien? Against their own identity? Imot deres egen identitet? Against their own beliefs eventually? Imot deres egen tro til og med? Okay, this is uh, very important. Right now we're the only ones in this region to Or, try balancing what comes out from Gaza akkurat today. Akkurat nu så er vi den eneste i, i denne region som forsøker å balansere Okay, right now there's one media center in southern Israel, which is us, a small media center. You have over 20 media centers in Gaza. Funded by multi-million dollar campaigns. Okay, I have a propaganda machine, literally. And the part of my reason being here today, we've uh, produced, a Stroke Media Center produced a uh, 17-minute documentary. It took us, took us two years to produce. It took us two to produce We uh, filmed the terror victims all around the region. We have filmed and interviewed terror offers from the region. Six people with the different stories. Six different people with their different stories. And hearing from up close. You heard from that whole uh, about their loss and what they've been through. Their stop or what they are going through. But in the same time, our message in Israel in Men this part of the region so vårt budskap i Israel och i, i denna region is worshiping life. Det är att tillbe livet. And somehow people are still going on with their lives, their daily routine lives. För människan på en eller annan märklig måte så klarar lika en befolkning att fortsätta med sina liv. And that's part of the Israeli mentality. Och det är en del av den israeliska mentaliteten. On one hand, you're under rocket fire. På den ena sidan så är du under konstant raket. At the same time, you have uh, new buildings. New neighbors being built up. So people actually choosing to move into this region. So hear, hearing it from up close from uh, six people about their stories and how they are they are coping with their stories. And that's the purpose of this of this documentary. Is to tell these stories that have not been told almost anywhere. At the same time, to present one million Israelis 
en million israelere in southern Israel. I sydlige Israel. So this is the first time I'll be showing this. Det er den første gang jeg viser det. Actually, last night was my first time. Ja, faktisk i går var første gang. But this is my first trip showing this documentary. Men det er den min første tur der jeg viser denne dokumentarfilmen. Okay. בגדול כולנו מסכימים על בסביבות ה-8,600 רקטות בעיר הזאת עצמה, רק בעיר, בתוך העיר, 8,600 רקטות. סך הכל בסביבות ה-27,000, 28,000 רקטות שנראו בכלל בישראל. רק בנס האירוע הזה לא נגמר באסון. אנחנו נוסעים למקום הפגיעה באוטובוס של הילדים, איפה שציון ימיני נפגע. נסעתי ילדים לבית ספר 27 שנים, ואהבתי את העבודה, אהבתי את הילדים, והיה לי סיפוק מהעבודה. הכל היה פה מפוזר על הכביש. והקטע היה באיזשהו מקום מפחיד, כי אתה רואה אוטובוס ילוקה, אוטובוס צהוב, שידוע בכל העולם כאוטובוס של ילדים. זה היה קטע מפחיד, אבל תוך כדי זה שאנחנו מתחילים ככה לעשות את העבודה שלנו, התחילו לראות עלינו, באזורים האלה, פצמ"רים. אני מתקפת פצמ"רים. יש מתקפת פצמ"רים בגבעה, אני מבקש לא להיכנס, לא להיכנס לגזרה. ולא <laughs> אבל עם הילד הזה מאוד מאוד קשה לי, אני חילצתי אותו, מצב מאוד קשה ש... שגם אני הייתי, זה היה הדף משהו נוראי, נתקעו לי דברים בגוף, אש, עשן, בקושי נשמתי ואני אמרתי לעצמי, אתה מוציא את הילד, אני בקושי אמרתי על הרגליים. לא יודע איך היה לי כוח לעמוד. אני ירדתי ברגליים אבל אני הוצאתי אותו. הוא בדרך הביתה, כולנו ישבנו, צחקנו, ואיך שהגעתי למועדון שלנו, אז פתאום התחלנו לשמוע בומים, וראינו חיילים רצים כמו מטורפים, ו... ואז הבנו בעצם שהתחילו יריות של רקטות וקסאמים. מאוד קשה לי. מאוד קשה לי. זה הכל עולה לי וצף, כאילו שאני נמצא במקום. כל לילה אני חווה את זה כמה פעמים. מתעורר עם סיוטים, הכל חוזר, אני רואה את הכל, ממש את הכל, את הילד, את האוטובוס, את האש, את העשן, הכל חוזר. לפחות איזה שלוש, ארבע פעמים בלילה. גם היום קשה לי לראות, במיוחד אוטובוס צרוף, קשה לי לראות. ניסו הרבה פעמים, באיזשהו שלב הצלחתי לעלות שתי מדרגות והתמוטטתי. היה לי קשה לנשום ו... לא יכולתי לתפקד, לא יכולתי ל... הוא חי, בשבילי, כאילו שאני רואה אותו חי, אני זוכר אותו, הוא תמיד היה רץ אליי. היה אומר לסבתא שלו שלום, והיה רץ אליי הביתה, הוא היה אצלי יותר מאשר אצלך בבית כמעט. היה לבנו קשר מאוד מאוד טוב, מאוד חזק. שהפתיע את כולנו, כי זאת רקטה שנפלה ללא התראה צבע אדום או ללא התראה מסוימת. לא האמנתי. לא חשבתי שפעם יקרה לי דבר כזה. תוך שנייה החיים משתנים לתחלוטין. אתה רואה את החיים בצורה אחרת. דברים שפעם לא היית שם לב עליהם, היום כן. רקטת הגראד פגעה הערב באשקלון בהפתעה מוחלטת. אפילו האזעקה לא הופעלה ולא הכינה את מאות המבלים בקניון העירוני 
למה שעומד לקרות. יש שם הרס נוראי, זאת רקטה שנפלה על הגג של הקניון, וכמובן שזה שוב פעם נגמר שם גם כן לפי דעתי באיזשהו נס. זו פעם ראשונה שצוות רפואי אזרחי זה נפגע. עד אז היו רופאים צבאיים, אבל לא שבכוונה זורקים על מרפאה. הם ידעו טוב מאוד ששם יש מרפאה למעלה. הייתה אינתיפאדה שנייה, היו לי הרבה פציינטיות מעזה. שם קיבלתי אותה. אז הם ידעו טוב מאוד ששם יש מרפאה. אני רוצה לי מצאים, אם אני אצטרך אותך, אני אצטרך אותך. תהיי פה. אם אני אצטרך אותך, אני אצטרך אותך. שמענו בום, שזה ממש מתפרקות לחלקים. התרגלתי, התרגלתי לראות את הפנים. הצלקות עכשיו קצת פחות, רואים אותן. דרך אגב, עברתי שבע ניתוחים פלסטיים בפנים. אבל מה שאני מרגישה, זה לא רואים. בגלל שאין לי תחושה בשפתיים. אין לי תחושה בקצה של האף. יש לי קושי לנשום. האמת צריך לעבור עוד ניתוח, אבל אני פוחדת מהתוצאה של הניתוח. בגלל שאין איזשהו מומחה שיכול להבטיח לי שהתוצאה תהיה בסדר. בבית אני מרגישה בטוחה. יש לנו מקלט, יש אזעקה, אני רצה, אין שום בעיה. ועוד פחד שלא יפעילו את האזעקה. זה עוד יותר גדול. זה בדיוק מה שקרה לי. לפני כניסת שבת, אני זוכר שלצערי שמתי כפפות והתחלתי לעזור לאיש זקה שם לאסוף את כל החתיכות מהגופה שלו. שבועיים אחרי, נגיד, ישבנו שבעה, שבוע אחרי זה הרגענו את כל הסיפור הזה שאיך לשקם את הבית מחדש. זה היה פשוט נורא, זה לא... מישהו אה, נהרג בפיגוע בתל אביב, הוא בא, כשיושבים שבעה אצלו בבית, הבית שלו שלם, הבית שלו אה, בכל זאת לא עבר איזה טלטלה, אה, בוא נגיד חום. איך אני אסביר את זה? שאתה יושב ואתה לא רואה את הבית הרוס. פה אתה יושב שבעה, שכל החלונות מוגפים בדיקטים, שזה וחורים ו, 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 ותוהו ובוהו. ואתה מבין שאתה יושב במקום שקרה פיגוע. החיים שאחרי ג'ימי זה היה מאחרת. כל מי שהכיר אותי אומר, מה, איפה היית כל השנים? כאילו, איך זה קרה? איך נתת לזה לקרות בכלל? כל פעם שיש טרגדיה, ואני רואה איך משפחות נהרסות, כואב לי הלב. כואב לי ממש את הלב. כי אני, אני מבין מאיפה זה בא, אני מבין אותם, וחבל שאי אפשר, לא, זה לא קל להוציא אותם מזה. אנחנו בחרנו בחיים, אנחנו ממש החלטנו ביחד שאנחנו בוחרים בחיים עם כל הקושי, זה לא היה פשוט. אני לא מרגישה רע עם זה, אני, זה, אני לא חשבתי לעולם לעזוב את המקום הזה, אני גם לא אעזוב את המקום הזה. היום אני ישראלית לכל דבר. כשהגעתי לארץ, התגיירתי, עשיתי כל המבחנים, כל מה שדרוש. ורק אחר כך החלטתי ללדת, שהילדים לא יהיו ממזרים, אז הם יהודים לכל דבר. ואני מרגישה מאוד טוב פה. מאוד טוב גם באשקלון, שאלו אותי הרבה, עכשיו אתם לא עוזבים אשקלון אחרי מה שקרה? לא. למה? זה יכול לקרות בכל מקום אחר. טוב לי פה. הייתי רוצה שיהיה שקט, אני הייתי רוצה שיהיה שלום, לא רק פה, בכל העולם אם הייתה אפשרות. אבל אני יודעת באותה מידה שזה לא יהיה, לפחות לגבי פה. אז עוד פעם צריך ללמוד לחיות עם זה. So that was our uh, short uh, documentary.
to share only some of the stories of people with, what they've been, with what the, what, how they've been affected for the past uh, over 12, 13 years now. At the same time, how they're still going on with their lives and realizing what's, uh, what's the future of this region. What you can see today, visiting Zerot with your own eyes, is a massive buildup of bomb shelters. Like no other place in the country or in the world. Israel has invested over half a billion dollars to protect the entire western Negev. Israel has invested a half million dollars to protect the population in western Negev. All these are bomb shelters attached to the old apartment buildings. All these are bomb rooms that are built in relation to existing buildings. This is a bus stop bomb shelter. And there is also a bus stop with bomb rooms. The way we call the road to the international community is calling it the bomb shelter capital of the world. And so, the road is called for. And that's the image you can find today in Zderot. It's a bit absurd that we're investing all this money in protection and bomb shelters. When, per when protection, of course, is not even a solution to this crazy reality. So we understand clearly what's to be expected in the very near future. To explain to people around the world especially over here, that what happens in our region impacts the entire world. Maybe later on you can hear from uh, Tore what happened here in Oslo during the uh, Gaza war operation cast led four years ago. The massive demonstrations worldwide before and after the Gaza conflict is only the beginning to explain to people what happens in this region is a trigger for anything else to erupt around the world. I'll give you These are tilted and destroyed mosques in Gaza during the Gaza war four years ago. You can imagine how one photograph of a, des a destroyed mosque of an a Hamas, mosque and Hamas, Hamas flag. flag. You can imagine how what kind of sympathy Hamas Gaza can actually get around the world. It is only one statistic to teach the next generation, especially us here today. Only one statistic to explain what we're up against on the other side of the fence. It's exactly this. According to the Air Force commander of Israel, 97% of rockets are being fired from among the populations in Gaza. Meaning the rockets are being fired behind homes, behind residential areas, behind schools, from inside next to the mosques, towards Israel. This is live documentation of a rocket being fired from a mosque. You'll be seeing later on very soon how Israel needs to target the uh, mosque. And by Israel protecting their citizens, by hitting where the rocket is being fired from, the image is the next morning. Men det bilder som du ser nästa morgon av destruction, devastation, av ödeläggelse, casualties, och dödsfall, or a religious institution being destroyed. Eller det att en religiös institution har blivit ödelagt. This is the image being broadcast around to the world. Dessa bilder har då blivit spridda över hela världen. Of having no clue what just happened a couple seconds before. Men folk har ingen ingen aning om vad som verkligen låg bak, vad som verkligen skedde. They say you have a natural disbalance of media coverage in this part of the region. En en stor ubalans av när det är mediedäckning från det området. Different weapons in southern mosques. Här ser du vapen som är funna in i en moské i Gaza. You see this, you understand clearly. När du ser det här då skönar du mer tydligt. We're dealing with one of the darkest elements in the world. Vad gör man när det är mörkaste elementen i hela världen? Not only using their own civilian population as a human shield. Som brukar sin egen civilbefolkning som mänsklig skjort. At the same time, using their own, is the army going into the mosque and finding uh, different weapons? 
Moskeen gaan vinden massies op open. Dat is in een moskeen. At the same time, the definition of terrorism. Of samt de definition van terrorisme. Using their own religious institutions. Ze hebben bruik van hun eigen religieuze instituties. As places where to hide weapons and equipment. Ten eerste dat die lager wapen of launching pads for rockets for missiles. Een schietingsramp voor raketten. And try to get any political agenda to get across. Or they prove for Jan for his own political agenda. And making very good money out of all this. Or for most of hang out for that. You should know, by the way, that after the Gaza war four years ago. The belief that at the Gaza war for four years. Because so much international press were on Gaza. So many international press in Gaza. The Norwegian government so the had a fundraiser in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, uh, allocating from 70 countries around the world $5.2 billion. Billion, yeah. Billion dollars to rebuild Gaza. Where is the money going to? How come there's no rehabilitation? For the past over 60 years, a lot, a really a lot to explain to understand about the media information war that we've been losing on the front lines of it. And this is the importance to understand the importance of speaking up and presenting any creative way as possible the human story that comes out from this region by presenting Sterot in southern Israel we are presenting a macrocosmic of the entire Israeli society and what, ki what kind of a society? A modern society of Jews coming back to their homeland from around the world, over 100 nations. Specifically in Zderot, you got Jews coming from North Africa. Jews that uh, fled, they, they ran away from the Muslim countries. Actually. Jews in the past uh, 35 years coming from former Soviet Union countries. The Ethiopian Jews. In the past five years, we got. Uh, Jews coming from northeast India, Myanmar, Peru, the lost tribes we call them. We have a dozen of Muslim Arab families. Muslim Arab families fleeing Gaza, living today in Zderot. We have a few Christians living in Zderot. Over 1,000 Sudanese refugees. Overall, you get across the people how you have a modern society. A diverse population. People with, people with a different beliefs, behavior, background. Living peacefully together. Being targeted. Only because they are Israelis. If there's one thing I've learned as a young adult traveling around the world, only one thing. Only one thing I've learned. Is with no doubt Israel is the only country in the world. That its legitimacy as a state is being questioned. There are human rights for self-determination as a Jewish state. Has been undermined. Has been undermined like never before. This has a lot to do with the lack of information. Or disbalance of information. Specifically from our region today. And we took this upon ourselves to speak up. And presenting any way as possible. This human story that should be reflecting back to ourselves today, to each and one of us. And this is again going back to the beginning. Why do we use this map? This is, what I, this is what I love showing in presentations in front of uh, anti-Israel or Palestinians. Why is the world being under rocket fire? Why Ashkelon? Why Ashdod? Why Be'er Sheva? These are the places that are considered by the other side as a... As a settlement? 
Och det de, men det blir omtalt som som settlement och som West, osättningar. In the western world, western society, uh, det västliga samhället. Western media, we were talking about mm. settlements. Västliga media så snackar man om osättningar. Automatically in our minds we think about the Judean Samaria och West Bank. Och det måste så tänkte då på Judea och Samaria, alltså det man kallar västbredden. Or Gaza Strip. Eller Gaza Strip. When in fact, according to the other side, is that the entire Israel is considered <laughs> Meaning we have no rights to live in this country. And the more, the, more people, the more people getting the wrong message about the roots of the conflict, the more people are forgetting, are forgetting our own rights to live in Israel today. And for me to get across to even Palestinians or Arabs or Israeli, or Israeli critics, I say it's not until both sides of the fence. I say it's not until the both sides of the fence. First of all, us Israelis and Jews. And by the other side of the fence. And the international community walk, watching upon this fence, upon this conflict, only accepts, only accepts our legitimate, our legitimate, international, international, Historical, Historisk, biblical rights. Rett, just to live in Israel, to bo i Israel. In our own homeland. I vårt eget it's not until we recognize this we could really rush on living side by side. And this is the roots of the conflict today. Detta är till idag. The basic question that rise is not being raised today. What is our right to live in Israel? And our job is from this re unique rocket reality, which does not so, make sense. Is saying out loud. Reminding everyone that we have every single historical biblical right to live in Israel. If you do not recognize my rights to live in Israel, you are considered by enemy. I have every single moral obligation to defeat you. If you do accept our rights to live in Israel, then we can start talking and negotiating. So this conflict has nothing to do with territory. So then the conflict is not about our first offense. It's about our own legitimacy just to live. It's about our own legitimacy just to live. As Jews and as Israelis. Some Jews and some Israelis. And that's the same today as the Rot. And that's the same as we say as the Rot. Presenting one million Israelis in southern Israel. We present we represent one million Israelis in the southern. Presenting, presenting what can be the future of the entire state of Israel. We present that as a convenient future for the Israeli state. And if you ask me, this is presenting the front lines. And if you ask me, so is this the front line of the Western civilization today? Of the Western civilization today. In many places around the world, especially around Europe. Many places in the world, and also also here in Europe. Are feeling the threats of radical Islam. They feel the threats of radical Islam. The ideology of worshiping the death, which is something very hard to get across to the Western mind to understand. Of what does it mean to glorify terrorism? And as, as we speak, in the next month, we'll be having a, a Hamas military summer camp in Gaza. So next month, it's going to be in in. En sommerleid i Gaza, en militär sommerleid. When entire new generation. Den helt nya generationen, den barn. Is going up, is going up with school books. I går ut med, drar ut med skolböcker. Funded, funded by the EU. Som är sponsrad av EU. And and exposed to different media elements. Och du har olika media elementer. And do not recognize our rights to exist even. Som inte anerkänner vår rätt till att existera. And this is what this is one of the one of the roots of the problem today that we have to deal with. Och detta är en av rötterna till problemen som vi har att deal med idag. So when we have sometimes five minutes, ten minutes. Vi då har några gånger fem minuter eller tio minuter. Half an hour. Halv timme. Speaking to delegations around the world. Och tal till delegationer från hela världen. We have a very big challenge to represent all all these messages. Då har vi en stor utfordring med att förmedla alla dessa budskap. In such a short time. I löper så kort tid. But when we start presenting these very powerful human stories. Men när vi startar med att dela dessa mänskliga historier. And hearing from people they worship life. Och hör människor som tillber livet. That's the first thing that we have to do today. Det är det första vi måste göra idag. So I'll stop over here.
Så eh, vårt besök här. Before we go on to questions. Så vi går över till och att vi kan ställa frågor. Very important. Whoever wants to put down their names and emails. Så vill jag gärna att du kan skriva ner dina namn här. Du kan skriva e-mailadresser här. We try sending newsletters every couple of weeks. Eh, vi sänder ut nyhetsbrev på e-post varje vecka. YouTube can obtain this information. Så du kan motta den information. And to send it on to your friends or colleagues or friends. Och så du kan sända det till dina vänner och släktingar och, och kanske studiekamrater eller något. Guarantee this has a big impact back in our region. Och jag garanterar att detta får en stor betydning för vår region. Vi har också tagit med oss vår DVD. Det är en dokumentär vi nätterbaserat. You're more than welcome to share with your friends. Så du mer än gärna dela med dina vänner. Your community. Ditt samfunn. As a private non-profit, it's a private non-profit organization. We ask only for a hundred krona. So we only ask hundred krona for that. It's for us to pay back for what we've done with this document. That's what we can afford. Få lite intäkt av det här. We have your magnets. Vi har sån fin kylskåpsmagnet. Saying I stand with the rot in the region. Där står det här står det på norsk. I står med sederot och Israel. Okay, you can put this on your fridge. Sätt det på kylskåpet. Next time you have a snack. Så nästa gång du ska ha något gott från kylskåpet. You can always remember us. Så vi blir på med dem oss. But again, I'm saying from today what the rot is standing for today. Och tänk på att vad sederot står för idag. It should remind us. För att påminna oss. Who are we in our own identity? Vem är vi och vår identitet? So I just ask you again for. 20-30 kronor så tar du med den som magnet. Som en souvenir, du är mer än välkommen till det. Jag har också en visitkort, bara ta med dig. Inga politiker då. Från Kristiansson, från Stavanger, från Oslo. Men det är en av vår anledning till att dela med människor det israeliska perspektivet. But doing this by sharing a very powerful human story. Men som till och med visar sanna människor i historia. So we appreciate any kind of support for our work. Så vi sätter pris på en varje form för stöd till vårt arbete. We're up against many, many elements. Vi vi må kämpa mot många många olika elementer. Especially especially spiritual elements. Speciellt under de elementen. And we need the courage, personally me. Och vi tränger det mot dem, speciellt är tränger det. Keep on doing what we're doing. Till att fortsätta att göra det vi gör. And having the courage to speak up. Och ha motet till att tala ut. And presenting accurately. Och presentera på en akkurat måte. The, the truth. Sanningen. Of our people. Och sanningen om vårt folk. Around the world. Över hela världen. So thank you very much. Så tusen hjärtligt tack. I'd say that uh, um, a short uh, example. Last year we hosted uh, three young adults my age. I invited them personally. They came for the first time to Israel. They came for the first time to Israel. And hosted them in Sderot. Opened their doors in the Abraham uh, kind of way. And this year they came with the entire party. They came, they came back to Israel and especially to Sderot. So there's not much you can say there's no excuse or reason in the world that could be giving for reality of finding rockets towards the civilian population. And with all this, you have a diversity of opinions in this region, and people are choosing to live, to keep on living in this town. Och bo i detta område. This is part of the mentality and message we try to create. Detta är den mentaliteten och den budskapen vi önskar och ska. And people see that by just coming to the office. Och människor ser det bara för att komma och besöka oss. It's quite a challenge with there many Scandinavian delegations, especially from Sweden. Nej, vi har ganska stor utfordring med skandinaviska delegationer, speciellt från Sverige. They spend a whole day in Gaza. De brukar hela dagen i Gaza. To see where their money has has gone. För att se var pengarna deras har gått. And they come to our center maybe for half an hour. Och så är det kanske bara en halvtimme hos oss. Go balance everything out. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. But again, we try pinpointing exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the human story. We try to pinpoint exactly about the Vet du, vi har hört om järnkuppen. This is a military battery. Det är ett militärt raketbatteri. It's supposed to be firing down the middle and long range rockets. Som det ska skjuta ner mellom och långdistansraketter. They're between 80 to 90 percent accurate. De är från 80 till 90 percent 
because in the yacht deal, it the cost is hundreds of millions of dollars to develop. It costs hundreds of millions to develop. Each anti-craft is uh, like fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, each rocket costs fifty thousand dollars. So, what can we say? Three hundred thousand krona. You need two of these, uh, two of these uh, anti-craft to hit the rocket. And you need two of these anti-craft to hit the rocket. And you need two of these anti-craft to hit the rocket. And you need two of these anti-craft to hit the rocket. And you need two of these anti-craft to hit the rocket. And you need two of these anti-craft to hit the rocket. And you need two of these anti-craft to hit the rocket. But but the real problem the real problem is. But the real problem is. You've got five batteries today. And this past operation. Or the last operation. Just to explain what happened last operation. Why for the explain what happened last operation? The last operation. The Federal Defense, November 2012. This operation, most Israeli citizens were under Iranian missile fire from Gaza. De fleste israelere, de var under da iransk raketangrep fra Gaza. Putting the Tel Aviv region and Jerusalem region. Det mødte jo de de skudte raketter både til Tel Aviv og til Jerusalem. By the way, can anybody guess where the missile was fired from in Gaza towards Jerusalem? Men kan kan nogen nok tænke okay, den raketten som traf Jerusalem, hvor i Gaza blev den affyret fra? Okay, anybody guess? Nå så kan du tage et jet en jetning. Near the Shiva Hospital in Gaza. Shiva Hospital, that was a huge house. That Israel, that Israel actually built, by the way. So, for example, big of Israel. But again, so you have five batteries. No, so we have five batteries. It's always a question. It's always a Russian roulette. What city, what region do you protect now? Well, there's some sort of Russian roulette. Which can be, which can open up the other Israel's got to be shot. In this range of most Israeli citizens' population. But we see here that the massive part of Israel's population buys you in a for a record in all these Israel. Hundreds of medium towns and cities. We have hundreds of medium stories buys in Israel. And so always a question: What region do you protect now? Well, there's always a question: Which can open up the Israel's got to be shot in the next one? And second of all, still in the western Negev, on the borders with Gaza, when you have 15 seconds until the explosion, there's no system in the world that could be could be hitting a target in less than 15 seconds. And therefore, the creative solutions, giving for this town. For denne byen her is bomb shelters. Bombe rum for hver lejlighed. Okay. Therefore, you understand how right now there is no solution to the rocket reality. Så det er ingen løsning for realiteten eller virkeligheden med raketter. And no government in the world. For ingen regering i hele verden. Will be spending such enormous funds to protect their citizens. For tænker og bruge så mye penge for at beskytte sine indbyggere. If they didn't understand what's to be expected in the very near future. Og det skønner vi lidt hvad vi kan forvente oss i fremtiden. Being very realistic and optimistic as much as we can. Vi er både realister, men samtidig optimister. This is our fourth ceasefire. Dette er den fjerde våpenvin vi har, som nu er mellom Israel og Hamas. In the past six years. Hvad er løbet de sidste seks år? Having hundreds of rocket attacks during the ceasefire. Og vi har haft hundredvis av raketangrep midt under våpenvin. So the quieter it gets in this region. Så jo mer roligt det blir i vårt område. The more you expecting the next day. Desto mer så bare venter vi at det sker noe neste dag. To be bombarded with rockets. Og til neste dag så kommer det nye bombardement. Just the psychological impact, it'd be quiet for two weeks. Og det er sånn psykologisk innvendig, altså når det har vært stille i to uker. When it's quiet, like like these days more or less, it could be very quiet. So now, for example, and when it's quiet, you're less thinking about the rockets. And when it's still and rolling, you're more you're more vulnerable. Da er du mer sårbar. You try go you try you try going back to your daily routine life. For sure, go to back to the everyday life. Once you have that one siren go off, you go back to the first day you've experienced a rocket explode nearby. And that's the impact that there is no post-trauma. This is still very much traumatic. Dette er ikke posttraumatisk. Det er et fortsatt gående traumatisk. We're talking about years of research of the entire population. Det kan bli gjort. Det trengs årevis med forskning på den befolkningen. Har du jobbet med coping? Altså hvordan hvordan man man takler dette her. And the same time are still still worshiping life. Og samtidig kan tilbe livet. And keep on going on with their lives. Og fortsætte med sine liv. And that's the symbol that should be taught all around the world. Og det er symbol som vi ønsker at fortælle over hele verden. Let's have one last question. Et sidste spørgsmål. Ja, en ny person. Ja, en ny person. Nu. How did the CNN react to this? Who? CNN. How did the CNN react to this? Who? CNN. How did the CNN react to this? Who? CNN. How did the CNN react to this? Who? CNN. How did the CNN react to this? Who? CNN. How did the CNN react to this? Who? CNN.
how did they react to this? Uh, well, again, we had almost any single foreign press you can think of came through the road, certain certain places. Certain also, time. Var eneste, uh, vilken, But it's, uh, look, if you go on any international uh, news broadcast, especially, especially during escalations, you have the entire focus on what happens in Gaza, and all the way in the bottom, you have those two sentences, this is our... This is a reaction to the two rockets being fired towards Israel. So, see, this is a reaction to the rockets that have been shot in Israel. The result of each side is very different, okay? And the result of the two different angles is very different. Because one side got targets among populations in Gaza. For one side, you have more, so that there is not a population. On the other side, Israel protects her citizens, so you get less physical damages. So, on the other side, Israel protects its citizens, so you have. So, so naturally, it's very easy to, for media to show one side of the story. So therefore, it's very natural, naturally, it's very easy for media to be able to focus on Gaza. Without, without understanding the intentions or policies of each side. But without understanding the intentions or policies of each side. Which is completely black and white. So that is completely black and white. Conflict is always complicated, always gray areas. Conflict is always complicated, and there will always be gray areas in conflict. If you ask me, you got civilians on both sides suffering. So, so the civil population on both sides, I mean, who lives. But the intentions and policies of each side, which is completely black and white. But the intentions and policies. Det er et sykehus inne i byen hvor mange av disse arabiske fra Gaza har blitt behandlet og fått førstehjelp for sine familier og sine fødende damer og så videre. Har araberne fra Gaza brukt som et mål for noen av sine raketter? Det er det ene. Det er helt forferdelig. Det er helt utenkelig i en sivilisert verden at man prøver å skyte en rakett inn i et sykehus som har behandlet dine barn og dine kvinner og andre syke. Det andre, det er denne skolebussen, denne gule bussen. I denne regionen så er det slik at busser som transporterer barn, de er gule. Skolebusser som transporterer småbarn til og fra skoler, barnehager og så videre, de er gule. Så alle vet dette når det kommer en slik buss. Og dette miraklet at like før denne bomben traff bussen, hadde han satt av de aller fleste barna, over 50 barn hadde han satt av. Så det var bare ett barn igjen i bussen, og denne gutten han ble truffet. Men tenk hvilken tragedie hvis alle disse 50 barna hadde vært i bussen når denne raketten traff. Så, kjære venner, la oss ikke tie deg. La oss stå sammen med VIF som en røst om urettferdigheten som skjer der nede i Midtøsten. Og så lenge vi er her, så vil vi være med å dele dette med den norske befolkningen så langt vi kan om denne uretten, slik at folk får vite hva som virkelig skjer der nede. Sannheten om situasjonen i Israel, hvilken situasjon de lever under. Så hjertelig takk, Noam og Bengt og Ove. Dette innslaget var laget av Med Israel for fred. Organisasjonen driver Nordens største nettsted om Israel. www.miff.no Gå til miff.no dersom du vil ha siste nytt fra Israel.